Oh, that's fantastic. Well, anyway, let's oven roast the sea bream with balsamic cherry tomatoes. What's cracking everyone? I'm Andre and let's cook fish. Summer is finally upon us and it's that time of the year where we can enjoy food that helps us attain and maintain that beach body. Meet Boris the Bream. I'm going to be cooking Boris here in a Provencal Mediterranean style. That type of French cooking even Italians don't object to because it's light and super delicious. Instead of butter, I'm going to be cooking with olive oil. Instead of amour, there'll be a lot of amore going on. So in the end, it all boils down to love. Before I start, a big hello and bonjour to Arnaud Van Am in Paris. His recipes from his book Poissonnerie I'm using to cook fish for this series. More on that and on how to make the perfect yet simple fish stock in my last episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a fish nerd and I feel obligated to give you a little bit of background information on the fish that I cook. So please indulge me for a few moments, but if you are impatient to move on to the cooking bit, please feel free and fast forward. Sea bream, or to be precise, gilted sea bream, get their name from this golden band between their eyes. Its scientific name is Sparus orata. The Italians call it orata, the French dorade royale, the Germans goldbrasse. In Croatia it's known as komracha and the Japanese call it Thai. However, Thai is a general term for sea breeds. This species belongs to the family of Sparidae, vernacularly known as porgies. That's very, very interesting for the two people watching right now. The sea bream can be found along the eastern coastline of the North Atlantic as well as in the Mediterranean. It mainly feeds on mollusks and shellfish and since you are what you eat, it is presumed to be the reason why its meat is so sweet in taste. Speaking of taste and diet, calorific values. 100 grams of meat will give you about 100 calories give or take 20% of protein, around 2% of fat, and pretty much zero carbs. You know what I'm talking about. You'll need a sea bream weighing around 700 to 800 grams. This is going to feed two people comfortably. This one is slightly bigger because I'm a greedy, greedy pig. If bream is unavailable, you can go for sea bass, Bronzino, striped bass or pink bream, all of these will do the job. Ask your fishmonger to gut and scale this fish for you. If that's not an option, hang on, I'm going to show you how it's done in a moment. Speaking of fishmongers, if you happen to be living in London or be visiting this fair town of ours, make sure to pop by Finn and Flounder on Broadway Market in Hackney, where I'll be more than happy to do the cleaning bit for you. You'll need some fresh basil, four tablespoons of aceto balsamico. Try to go for the original modernese type because that's more viscous and it's just simply way more delicious in the sauce. Four cloves of garlic, olive oil and cherry tomatoes. Salt, crushed black pepper and that's it. Kitchen toys. You'll need a searing pan, an oven roasting dish, a spatula, a chef's knife and that's really it. If you are going to be cleaning the fish at home however you'll also need shears, a descaler and I like to use a boning knife. If you don't have a boning knife just make sure that you use a knife that's about 15 centimeters in length and has a sturdy blade and that's really it. Let's do it. Place our friend Boris onto your chopping board and trim all his fins. Begin with the dorsal fin going from the tail end towards the head. Leave on the first dorsal spine. I'm going to reveal why at the end of this video. Yep, this is a hook. Repeat with the anal fin and also leave on the first spine. Trim both of the pectoral and pelvic fins.
And finally, the caudal fin. Here I'm just demonstrating the motion of how to apply the descaler to scale the fish. Because here is a home kitchen safe trick. Pop your fish into a plastic bag, cover it up and start scratching. Another way of doing this would be in the kitchen sink filled with water. I prefer this inside the bag method however, as you'll have to deal with much fewer scales in your sink when cleaning up. With your boning knife, cut through the jugular connection below the gill plates. Hold on to the fish, pinch the gills firmly and twist them out. Ta-da! Wipe clean the scene of the crime. Insert the knife straight into the ventral cavity all the way up to, well, you see where the tip is coming out. And slice through the belly. Now insert the knife right above the guts and flat against the backbone. Swoop along the outside of the ribcage and scrape out the entrails. I must say, the music does complement this bit rather well. Scrape out the bloodline. You can also use any type of brush for this, but uh, I'm kind of old school. If there's belly fat, scrape it out. Rinse well under cold water and remove any leftovers with kitchen roll. Cherry tomatoes. Pick and wash. Stack the basil leaves. And chiffonade. Crush the garlic cloves inside their peel as this will prevent them from burning. Hopefully. Heat up some olive oil. Note that here I am using a different, cheaper and more heat resistant one. Sizzle the tomatoes over medium high heat until they get nice searing marks, about 5 minutes. Toss in the garlic and cook for another 3 minutes. Turn off the heat. And deglaze with the balsamic vinegar. Salt, pepper, basil, my basil. Transfer everything into the oven dish and arrange in a circle. Season Boris on the inside and on the outside and place him in the middle. Now cook in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius for about 15 minutes. Et voilà! Am I happy? I'm so happy. So I've decided to throw in a spontaneous off the script fish filleting session. Um, so to your utensils list, you'll have to add a set of fish filleting gear. Not to worry, these can be found on the internet. Instead of doing what I'm doing here, take the fish out of the dish and fillet him on the chopping board. This is way easier. Stupid, Andre. Stupid. Remember the spines we left on? Here's the big reveal. If you're unsure if your fishy is cooked through, pull one of the spines. If it comes out easily, dinner's ready. Make an incision behind the gill plate, remove and reserve the collar. Continue along the back. Repeat on the belly side. Detach the skin at the base of the tail and carefully roll back. At this point you should be seriously salivating. I know I am. Reserve the skin with the collar. And separate the top loin from the belly loin and serve. Oh, 
Tap along the spine, applying slight pressure to help the bone detach from the fillet underneath. Slide your filleting knife under the backbone towards the head and detach from the fillet below. Now repeat as we did with the first side. Remove the rib bones. I actually forgot to show you this on the previous fillet, sorry for that. Just flip the other one around and do exactly as I'm doing now. And serve. Check for those sneaky pin bones. Now plate your tomatoes and don't forget about that pan juice. Now would be the right time to use all the good stuff. Winner winner sea bream dinner. Without any further ado, the moment we've all been waiting for and by we I mean moi. Let's try. Mm. Sweet. Baby, Jesus. This is so, so good. Mm. Do you know what this tastes like? Mm. It tastes like your seat neighbor's dinner. You know, the stuff you peer enviously across the table at, wishing that you had ordered it at the restaurant. Oh. Okay, okay. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. But... Lest I forget, remember zero waste policy. I kept the head and the collarbones and that lovely skin we had. We took off of the upper side. So, so good. I can't be asked to faff around the camera anymore. I'm just going to show you. I haven't eaten all day, I'm really sorry. How to get... Get to those cheeks. Open it here. Here. And scoop out. Oh. See you next time.